destined to perpetrate drafts. The alleged laundering of 37 billion naira at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development under the former minister, Sadio Omar Farouk, is another pointer. Controversy over a memo issued by the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, instructing the Accountant General of the Federation, Uluatoye Madang, to pay 585 million naira into the private bank account of a project accountant in her ministry. Bridget Bonielu is rocking the ministry. The past and present ministers are under fire as groups are calling for the sack of uh, Beta Edu and the probe of the transaction. Biko, uh, what exactly is it about this ministry? I think this ministry, a lot of people see this ministry as a cash cow and also as a place where money can be stolen with his. And there is a pressing need mm. for the Tinubu government to change that perception. The woman who acted as, uh, who was national coordinator for the conditional cash transfer was accused of presiding over the transfer of 44 billion naira from the National Social Investment uh, Program to private accounts of individuals and um, corporate concerns that were believed to have acted as fronts uh, for the people in government. She has been suspended by the president. Uh, investigation is going on. The EFCC has told her that she must visit the EFCC every day after she was granted bail. Now, The most embarrassing for me is not just that the former minister, Shadia Umar, is also being investigated for alleged looting of 37 billion under her watch between 2017 and 2022. But the current minister, Better Edu did something that I found unthinkable. And there was an attempt to explain away what she did that look within the civil service, it is permitted for money to be transferred into uh, a civil servant's account. By what law? Oh, have these people come to the conclusion that Nigerians simply don't ask questions? Mm. If we place 580 million naira meant for the poorest of the poor in Ogun State, Lagos State, Akwaibom, and I think Cross River, if we put that money in a private person's account, we should pay tax on the money. Will the bank not make deductions by way of tax? Why are we surprised that an act, uh, accountant general of the Federation could steal as much as 109 billion naira and return 44 billion? At least this was confirmed on the floor of the court that she had already made a refund. The law, the prosecution admitted that the former accountant general, somebody that the president extended, the former president extended his stay in service after you reach the terminal age for civil servants the president extended it this is what we got 109 billion now we have a current minister telling us that it made sense to transfer 580 million into a private account mm. i think that better i do as embarrassed the Tinubu administration. There are no two ways by which we can call this. There are no two names by which we can call this. And I appreciate the Accountant General of the Federation, Madeleine, 
because we just dodged the bullet there. Yes, she wrote to the accountant general, but the accountant general has told us that she refused to honor the the uh, the memo that she sent. I want to read what the accountant general said, which completely puts a lie to Better's claim that it is permitted uh, in the civil service for for money uh, to be posted into a private account. The AGF noted that in such situations, payments are usually processed by the affected ministry as self-accounting entities, and no bulk payment is supposed to be made to an individual account in the name of project accountant. She then added that such payments should be sent to the beneficiaries through their verified bank accounts. This is what Beta Edu should have done. If we are accusing the former administration of permitting the transfer of billions of Naira into foreign accounts, a new administration, its minister should not be trying to do the same thing. What if we didn't have this kind of accountant general? The government would have been embarrassed. Mm. Or does better I do not know that things have changed? Nigerians want to see that things have changed. Nigerians are groaning. This is money meant for the poorest of the poor in our society. You are trying to move it into private accounts. And an aid of the minister will open his mouth and try to explain it away that it is permitted. By what law? It contravenes the Money Laundering Act. So which law permits you to move that quantum of money into a private account? How do you even confirm compliance when, it's sitting, when the money is sitting in the private account? What is wrong with us in this country? And again, the president and his men should Take a good look at ministers. Ministers have no right to be breathing down the neck of civil servants and getting them to contravene the law. Undue interference in the work of civil servants is against the CBN Act. You can't be seen to be uh, pushing civil servants to go against uh, the, the CBN Act, just because you are trying to be to, to, to be funny. Better I do is lucky today because the the accountant general pushed back. But I don't think that even in doing that, Nigerians will easily forget that there was an attempt to put more than half a billion in a private account. That does not it does not connote transparency. It sends a clear signal of an attempt to misuse the money. And better I do, if she survives this, she has to be very careful. Mr. President must hand down a, a serious warning to her that she must never again try this sort of nonsense, try to embarrass the government in the manner that she has done. That is my ten cobble. All right, Abiko. I mean, she has also said this is targeted harassment. But that, would you say this is also apparent lack of structure in that ministry? Well, <clears throat> well, if you look at it truly, I'm not sure that that ministry has um, any structure because even when the um, former vice president was also there, this same ministry was under, you know, the vice president then. And if you are spending money with reckless abandon until it was removed and then they now set up a ministry, you know, the former one, the day I knew that there was a problem in that ministry was during COVID when they said they were feeding children at home. <laughs> that was when I, <laughs> I just said, oh no, this ministry is not a ministry at all, you know. The, from this, just like Bikio said, if she survives, it's going to be a pointer to every other minister. Because it's like, that ministry is just like a cash cow to some people. You go there because there's disaster. You just go there, push money, put your hand inside the and then begin to spend. And then, because nobody's really looking at it, because disaster will happen. People will be hungry. 
and they will be spending the money left. Be so, yeah, you know, so the thing <sighs> is, that ministry has, they have to be, it's real structure. I think the president has to step in there and look at how we can build a solid structure for how money can be disbursed. Because if we don't, you bring another person, this money will still be there. And then they will be, they will be pushing the money around. Civil servants will teach you how to you know, write one thing or the other, and then money will go out. And the ministers will always push for money because they will tell you, there's no money for me to you know, give to the poor or to the vulnerable. So what we now need is not just the structure that is on ground, because from all the things I've heard, it's like, truly, there's no structure in that particular um, uh, ministry. ministry. The processes are very, they are scattered. The minister can just come and say, give me money. And then, that is why somebody can easily move for the four billion into a private account in four days. So nobody is doing, no check, no balance, nothing. So the president must look at that ministry. Because even the World Bank is also interested in that ministry because it's also saying sometimes they, have, they get grants, you know. So we need a solid structure on ground so that when once a minister gets there, he knows that this is what I will do or you bring your idea. Because Betha has been telling us, I know back then, she said, okay, they will be giving money directly to the vulnerable's account. So I was shocked to hear that they can still remove money and then they will you know, put it somewhere, and then from there, they will begin to share it again. You can't move it by, by civil service, by even the, any rule at all. You can't move money from a government account and put it into a private account. Either can you, as a private person, even move your own private cash into a government account. It's not done, you know. So the, 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 uh, the president has to investigate this matter. And when I mean invest, investigate properly, if they need to be suspended, if there needs to be a suspension for, for it to happen, let it happen. So that people will know that the president does not have a hand. Yes, she has said she got approval from the president. But the president who gave approval can also say, okay, fine. Why didn't you also check? You are the minister. You would have checked right. if there are rules and regulations that I should not even fall into. You know? Because the president is not all-knowing. That is why he has you as a minister. For you to also advise in some things and, and all that. So let there be a proper investigation so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to see the end of this matter because Nigerians are really, really angry over this mm. money. I mean, and you begin to wonder why so many schemes initiated on that, that ministry intended to bring people out of poverty has never worked. And that's it. That's what I was just trying to say earlier when I was blaming the federal government because people believe that the federal government has unlimited resources. So even if the state and local governments are not performing, the federal government will always cover. Yes, you have interventionist schemes like this ones, where, yes, you will pay vulnerable people. It's in so many countries of the world, yes. But you see, they, are not, they cannot take the place of policies, policies, actual policies that take care of the people. That is one. The second thing is that the procurement law what it means is that whoever is in charge of the procurement agency should now begin to demand, demand actual reports from ministries on issues of procurement. Then the thought in, I'll align with what Mr. Zach Adedeji, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue, mm -hmm. says, yes. said at, it, I think, a recent National Assembly hearing, where he said that, I think the ministries should stop making, making payments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that they should send their vouchers to the Office of the Accountant General, who will now go through and then make the payments so that if there are, if you have withholding tax, you know, some of the things these people, some of these politicians do, they don't also know they deny the nation of needed revenue. Mm -hmm. So when you move money anyhow, one, a transaction that's supposed to fetch the nation 10% withholding tax, the nation is denied. Mm -hmm. If there are certain items that are procured one way or the other, and you're supposed to pay VAT on them, 7.5%, the nation is denied of that. And so what happens? You are moving the money recklessly, and you're also denying the nation of badly needed revenue. So I think whoever it is, is it the National Assembly or the presidency, should actually look into and implement this implementation, this um, suggestion by 
Mr. Dedeji, that let the accountant general's office be saddled with payment of vouchers. Let the ministries carry out their core mandates. They are not payment officers. Let them carry out their core mandate so that we can also drastically reduce corruption in this country. And I think the woman should step aside. She should be suspended. She shouldn't wait for the president to either suspend her or sack her. Because this is very embarrassing. Trying to say, the procurement law is there. It's there in black and white. And you are trying to educate us that, no, these things are done. Which is all these people think Nigerians are stupid. We are not stupid. All right. I will advise her to step aside. Thank you. Now, uh, let's wrap this up with your final take on this. Um, President Tinubu has no choice. He has to fight corruption. A lot of corruption happened during the last administration. The president owes it a duty to Nigerians to go after those who stole our money in the last administration and the administration before it. It doesn't necessarily have to send everybody to jail. But those who have stolen our money, who are reluctant to part with what they have stolen, those ones, they are candidates for jail. They should be natural candidates for jail. And within his administration, he has to make it clear, because Nigerians are angry. When people are hungry, they don't like hearing stories like, uh, like this one involving better Edu. And with our education, I expected a better level of behavior. What she has done is inexcusable. And to get her, uh, her aide to be telling us that uh, she had not contravened any law was very ridiculous and insulting. But thank God for the Accountant General of the Federation, who has now made it clear that this is the structure. When this kind of money comes, it should be sent directly to the verified accounts of the uh, beneficiaries, not to go to the account of uh, a so-called uh, project accountant. No, that's not done. The president has to draw a line in the sand and say, enough. This should never happen again. And if the president has some exuberant ministers in his ranks, he has to get rid of them before they embarrass him. Mm. He has to get rid of immature, exuberant, All right. and uh, 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 people among the ministers. That has to happen. And that will make Nigerians see the president as someone who will not wink at corruption, who will not tolerate corruption. That has to happen. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, wonderful perspectives uh, today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Azokwa James. Thank you, Mikhail Madunagu. And thank you so much, BKO, for joining us uh, via Zoom. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks. Right. And that's all we have today on Journalist Hangout on Sunday. Join us tomorrow for the regular episode of the program at 5 p.m. You can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tonight at 11.30. We are on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Olaju Mokyo Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.